I'm going to start today's conversation with a small episode from an, a very important story in the Quran to help us understand one of the ways of remembering Allah. And actually my intention, hopefully if we get enough time, is to cover two of the ways of remembering Allah that all of you are familiar with. When Allah Azza wa Jal decided to create the human being and put him on the earth, Allah Azza wa Jal informed the angels first. إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خليفة. I am putting someone on the earth that is going to be leaving others behind and then others behind and then others behind. يَخْلُفُ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا Meaning, is going to put the human being on the earth who will be here and he will leave children and his children will leave children and they will carry on like that. Also it means I will leave someone behind who will have to make his own decisions. Meaning, Allah will not dictate for us when we can stand up and when we can sit down. When we can open our eyes and when we close our eyes, we'll have to make that choice ourselves. He will give us the instructions on what to do, but then you are free to do and you are free not to do. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whoever wants to believe, they can believe. Whoever wants to disbelieve, they can disbelieve. Up until now, the angels understood that they, when Allah created them, He did not create them with a choice. Yet, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ they don't disobey Allah in anything He commands them to do. They do as they're told. The angels do as they're told. But now Allah tells the angels, I'm creating someone new, and I'm going to leave him on the earth, and he's going to have a choice. And they're going to have many generations of them. And the angels were shocked. By the way, this story, you know, uh, the Christians and the Jews also have the story of Adam and Eve. And they have the story of creation, whatever's what they in the record in the Bible. But this part of the story that's in the Quran is not in the Bible. This is not found anywhere else except in the Quran. So Allah Azza wa Jal says to them that I'm going to put the human being on the earth, and they say, You're going to put someone on the earth who's going to make a lot of trouble. He's going to cause corruption. He's going to commit crimes. He's going to create fasad. Fasad means all kinds of crimes. Corruption, mischief, trouble, and then and chaos. And then وَيَسْفِكُ dima, He will even shed blood. He'll kill. They're going to, you know, dima actually doesn't. Dam means blood. Dima means rivers of blood. This human being will be so capable of evil that sometimes he'll kill entire villages. He'll bomb entire cities. He'll kill so many. And this is what the angels were afraid of before Adam was even put on the earth. And they asked Allah, this doesn't make any sense to us. How can you put someone like this on the earth? And Allah Azza wa Jal told them, I know something you don't know. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. Certainly I am the one who knows what you don't know. After the conversation, and I'm not telling you this story today, but I wanted to help highlight an episode from this story. Then Allah Azza wa Jal proved to them why Allah is right and they are wrong. And when Allah proved to them He is right and they are wrong, they said the following. They said, Subhanaka la ilma lana. They said the words, Subhanaka. And from that, today, you and I, when we remember Allah, one of the most common things we say is, Subhanallah. We say, Subhanallah. And the angels said that to Allah Azza wa Jal when they recognized that maybe when they questioned Allah and they didn't understand what Allah Azza wa Jal, His plan was. And they just worried about it and they wondered what Allah's intention could be because they could not see the wisdom in Allah's plan. They did not see the purpose. But Allah knew. So they recognized maybe they should not have asked a question in this way. And when someone says something or thinks something about Allah that they should not have thought, when they feel that they have crossed a line with Allah, then like the angels, they should say, SubhanAllah, how perfect you are. The word subhanallah actually is from the word tasbih or sabaha, which means to keep something at the same level. Meaning, Allah is perfect whether you understand or you don't understand. Allah's plan is perfect whether you understand or you don't understand. What Allah did with your life in the past is perfect whether you understand or you don't understand. What Allah plans to do in the future is perfect whether you understand or you don't understand. Allah's mercy is perfect, His love is perfect, His plan is perfect, His wisdom is perfect, His revelation is perfect, everything about Him is perfect, whether or not it fits in our brain or not. And so the way we acknowledge that is by saying, SubhanAllah, we declare the perfection of Allah. We declare that Allah cannot be criticized. Anything Allah does, anything Allah knows, anything Allah plans, anything Allah plans for the world, or anything Allah plans for me personally, none of it can be criticized. The only one that can be criticized is me, not Allah. 
not Allah. So the angels are afraid that maybe when they ask this question, that they may have been critical. Even though they're not critical, they just didn't understand. But they're so afraid that they tell Allah Subhanak. Subhanak. The first thing I want you to understand when we say Subhanallah, is that it is said in the Quran, so many places, when people say inappropriate things about Allah, when they say Allah has partners, or when people used to worship idols instead of worshiping Allah, or when people said Allah has a son, ma'adallah, when these kinds of things were said in the Quran, Allah would respond, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah amma yushrikun. Allah is way too perfect for you to say something like that. Allah is too far above, removed from these kinds of claims. So the point, the summary of what I'm sharing with you thus far, is that we say Subhanallah when we might have said something or thought something that is not appropriate about Allah Azza wa It is there to remove the negative. The purpose of Subhanallah is to remove the negative thoughts or negative words, mistakes we may, we may have made towards Allah Azza wa That's the purpose of it. You know, to give you an example, you know, in the, in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, when the Prophet ﷺ was making a treaty with the kuffar, and all the companions were angry. Every one of them, they did not want to make a treaty. They said, these people fought us three times already. They fought us in Badr, they fought us in Uhud, they fought us in Ahzab, and now we're going, they don't even let us make Hajj, and we're making a treaty with them? This makes no sense. So they were angry. But still the treaty was being written, and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was charged by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to write the treaty and the treaty was between them and Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the word Rasulullah, their, their negotiator said, we don't believe you are Rasul. Say Muhammad son of Abdullah. Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Don't say Rasulullah, cross that out. Erase it. And when he said erase it, all the Sahaba were so offended. And all of them, the narration said, all of them screamed, Subhanallah. They screamed, Subhanallah, because they thought erasing the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is an act against Allah. It's a crime against Allah azza wa jal. So the, the, the first thing I want you to know about Subhanallah, it's there to remove or to express how we believe about Allah beyond any imperfection. When you hear something incorrect, or when you feel something incorrect towards Allah, and that's the devil's trick. Let me tell you something really interesting about the story of Adam alayhi salam. The angels asked a question to Allah because Adam was not making sense to them, yes? And a little bit later on in the same story, there's someone else who asked a question because it wasn't making sense to him. Iblis asked a question too, didn't he? He said, man khalaqta You really want me to do sajdas with someone you made from dirt? Why should I do that? They, so the angels asked a question, and Iblis asked a question. Allah is teaching us, sometimes questions come in the mind. Whether you are as good as angels, or you are as evil as the devil. The question is not the problem. The problem is what happens after you have a question, after you have a bad thought. When you have a thought like that, then immediately be like the angels and say what? Subhanallah, and kill that thought. And if you don't do that, then you are not following the path of the angels, then you are following the path of shaitan. That's the difference between the two. So we cannot control our thoughts. Sometimes they come. Sometimes you lose your job and why did Allah do this to me? What's Allah's plan? Two years I've been looking for work, I can't find work. Why did Allah give my, you know, my family member cancer? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this child die? You know? Why did, why, why did we have to move from our country? Why did this have to happen or that? People question what happens in their life. Sometimes people question, why are there so many wars in the world? Why is Allah letting this happen? Why is this, why is this fitna rising over here? Why, isn't that fit, why is that fitna rising over there? Why doesn't Allah just stop it? One time I used to have a friend, old friend in, the, you know, back in New York. He's a little bit crazy. I loved him. He used to tell me, Sadamah, no matter I have a question, I have, a, I have an idea. It was like Ramadan, like 20 years ago. He said, I have an idea. I said, what's your idea? He said, let's make dua to Allah to make an army of all the jinn and they can kill all the enemies of Islam. And our problem with <laughs> And he made dua like that for three years because nothing happened. He was <laughs> the idea being, sometimes we don't understand the plan of Allah and we start thinking maybe Allah's plan. Because you know, in our mind, we think our plan is perfect. Our sense of justice is perfect. Somebody did something wrong to you. Somebody lied to you. Somebody cheated with you. 
Somebody insulted you, somebody backbit against you, somebody slandered you, and they're eating their chicken biryani happily. And you're going looking at them saying, this is not fair. They did all this bad stuff and now they get to eat chicken? Where's the justice of Allah? When you start questioning like that, they should suffer. Why aren't they falling down the stairs? Why aren't they choking on that chicken? When you start questioning like that, that's the time to remind yourself of what words? Subhanallah. Because Allah's justice will always be better than your justice. Allah's plan will always be better than your plan. Allah always knows what you don't know. In your mind, how come they got away with it? When you say, how come they got away with it? You're thinking that Allah somehow let them get away with it. And that means in somewhere in your head, you think Allah was unfair. And if you think Allah was unfair, then in your mind, Allah is not perfect. Which is why you have to take a step back and tell yourself, Subhanallah, you are perfect. You understand? That's actually the meaning of Subhanallah. It keeps us from developing or nurturing critical thoughts about Allah. It removes critical thoughts about Allah. And actually, Allah Azza wa taught us, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, and Quran even says, Sabbih bihamdi rabbik. And we say, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah. Don't we? So Subhanallah comes first, and Alhamdulillah comes second. Why? Because until you get rid of the bad thoughts, until then, you cannot really thank Allah, and not, you cannot really praise Allah. You might just say Alhamdulillah, but you won't feel it. You ever meet people who are not happy with their life, and you say, how's it going? And they say, Alhamdulillah. You know, I mean, you're saying Alhamdulillah, but you're not happy with what Allah is doing with your life. You're questioning it. You know what's missing? Subhanallah is missing, which is why your Alhamdulillah is weak. You see, until Subhanallah is there, Alhamdulillah cannot be completed. This is the perfect wording of our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Subhanallahi nisful mizan walhamdulillahi tamla'uhu That the sub saying Subhanallah is half the balance and Alhamdulillah completes that balance You cannot get to the hamd of Allah until you have the tasbih, the Subhan of Allah And so the last thing I share with you about Subhanallah Today is just about Subhanallah I thought I might do Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah but the day after tomorrow inshallah we'll talk some things about Alhamdulillah so we can appreciate these two things in balance. And let's focus only today on Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal tells His Messenger. Now, one part of Subhanallah was getting rid of the negative. I explained that part. There's one more thing. The other thing is, there are some very interesting places in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal encourages people to say Subhanallah. And there are some very interesting places where Prophets said, reminded themselves, Subhanallah. Now you have to remember, Subhanallah is a declaration that Allah is perfect. That Allah is perfect. Musa alayhi salam, he was given the responsibility to go challenge Fir'aun. He asked Allah, I cannot do this alone, give me my brother. Ushdud bihi azri wa ashriku fi amri. He will reinforce me and he will share my mission with me. I can, it's hard for me to do this alone. Allah gave him Harun. So now they both of them, they go and challenge Fir'aun. When he asked for Harun, he said, كَيْ نُسَبِّحَكَ كَثِيرًا وَنَذْكُرَكَ كَثِيرًا إِنَّكَ كُنْتَ بِنَا بَصِيرًا He said to Allah, give me my brother so we can both, basic, in simple English I'll say, we can both say SubhanAllah a lot. And we can remember you a lot. First he asked for Harun to help him against Fir'aun. But then he explained to Allah, I want Harun so he and I can say what together? Subhanallah together and remember Allah a lot. What does Subhanallah have to do with challenging Fir'aun? You see, when you do da'wah, when you explain Islam to someone else, let's say you meet somebody on the street and they, they, they start asking you questions about Islam and you're talking to them. A lot of times you want to share the message of Allah. Yes? What do you want to and somebody has a personality like Fir'aun. If somebody has personality like Fir'aun, they'll make fun of you. They'll make fun of you. They'll make fun of your religion. They'll make fun of your prophet. They'll make fun of your book. That's what Fir'aun did. And when someone makes fun of you, does it make you angry or no? It makes you angry. And when you get angry, then you don't know if your anger is because you, your ego is insulted, or the deen of Allah is insulted. And so, because you represent, you don't represent your own pride. You represent only Allah's deen. And Musa alayhi salam knows that he gets very angry. 
He gets angry. But he cannot get angry when he represents the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. He got angry so much, he threw a punch and a soldier died, you remember. He got angry so much one time, alayhi salam, he grabbed the beard and the head of his brother. He's, he, he got angry so much, he broke the, the, the you know, the, 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 the alwah, the tablets. So there's the anger of Musa alayhi salam, we know. And he even asked Allah, Ya Allah, keep me from those who lose control of their emotions. A'udhu billahi an nakuna min al jahileen. He asked Allah this. He knows Fir'aun is going to say things that will make him what? Angry. And when he becomes angry, he will not do the job Allah wants him to do. Allah is too perfect for me not to do a good job. Allah the perfect one has given me this job. When I am not doing the job as I'm supposed to, my brother will be there, remind me, subhanAllah. Remember Allah is perfect. And he doesn't want this from you. He wants better from you. He expects more from you. And he will back me up when I'm failing. And I'll back him up when he's failing. We will remind each other of the perfection of Allah. That Allah has charged us with this remarkable responsibility. This is subhan. We will do tasbih of Allah together. And our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Two places you find. Two places. You find in the Quran when the enemies of the Prophet wasalam, who used to poke fun at him, humiliate him, they, this, this, this separated him from Makkah. They did all kinds of crimes against him, physical and emotional and verbal. All kinds of crimes. When their crimes would become too much for our messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah azza wa jal would tell him, Allah would tell him, Sabbih bihamdi rabbik. Wasbir ala ma yaqulun. Wasabbih bihamdi rabbik. Qabla tulu'i shamsi wa qabla al ghurub Be patient over everything they're saying to you. Just say subhanallah. He told his messenger, be patient over everything that they're saying to you. Just say subhanallah and say it before the sun comes up and before the sun goes down. Just say especially at those times, say subhanallah. So briefly I tell you, Allah especially mentioned before the sun comes up and before the sun goes down. Why? The messenger is being told, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, life changes. The enemies get bad and Allah can defeat the enemies too. Sometimes everything is bright like the day and sometimes everything is dark like the night. The situation around you will change. But one who will never change is Allah. Allah is perfect. So when you see the sky change from dark to light, or the sky change from light to dark, remember that Allah can change the entire universe around you so He can change your situation too. Because the only one who never changes his commitment to you and his support of you is Allah Azza wa Jal. So declare how perfect Allah is. Your situation is not perfect. Your own strength is not perfect. Your own ability to withstand your enemy is not perfect. But Allah is perfect and He is with you. So remind yourself of the perfection of Allah. Subhanallah. And after everything, after the darkness was over and the day came, meaning the victory of Islam came. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ now the night is over, the enemies are done. The, de the deen has arrived. People are coming into the religion in huge groups. What does Allah say? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Now it's time to declare Allah's perfection again. Why? Because just like bad times are not forever. The same way good times are also not forever. Only Allah is forever. Only Allah is forever. So remember the perfection of Allah in times of difficulty and remember the perfection of Allah in times of ease. Remind yourself that you are not here to just have an easy life for everything to stay the same. Allah will keep changing everything in your life. The devil, as soon as life changes for you, as soon as things become difficult for you, he wants you to question Allah just like he questioned Allah. That's what he wants. Why is Allah doing this to me? He literally said this to, to Allah, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي You made me slip. Why did you make me slip? Why did you mess me up? Ya Allah, this was your plan. You set me up. That's his thinking. He wants that exact same disease for you. Exact same disease. And Allah Azza wa Jal taught the angels the solution to that disease and that is SubhanAllah. And through them, He taught it to us. So we become a people of SubhanAllah. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us a people of Tasbih and through that Tasbih, never entertain thoughts or feelings ever words that are inappropriate for our master our rabb subhanallahi alazim barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al hakim